Secure all cargo. All passengers aboard. Bowman, cast off bow line. Engine room, ahead one quarter. Engine room, ahead three quarters. Leadsman, sound off. By the mark. Mark one. Mark twain. Half twain. Mark three. Mark four. Deep four, ocean deep. Howdy, folks. Welcome aboard the Mark Twain Riverboat. This is your captain speaking to you from the pilot house up here on the Texas deck. We're now leaving on a journey up the rivers of America and into the western frontier. For your safety, please do not sit on the handrails. The river can get mighty unpredictable in these parts, and gosh, we'd sure hate to lose anybody. With me up here in the pilot house is a man well known in these parts, Mr. Mark Twain, the famous writer for whom this very boat is named. Captain, it is my pleasure. Yeah, it sure feels good to be back on the river. Yeah, years ago, I, I made my living as a riverboat pilot. It was a, a gentle life, hearing the steamboat whistles far off around the bend, riding the broad, majestic river. It was this river that set me about becoming a rider, and she's not done wrong by me yet. Over there across the way is what used to be the grandest mansion in these parts. It's been sitting there empty for, <laughs> must be 20 years. Yep, that mansion looks pretty respectable from the outside. But the townsfolk tell me a whole different story. They say it's haunted and late at night when the river's real quiet, strange and unearthly sounds reach out from that old house. Now, 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 hold on there, Mr. Twain. You're starting to scare the youngsters, not to mention me. <laughs> Sir, truth is the most valuable thing we have. Uh, I believe we should be economical with it. Now, coming up on the port side is the most famous and strangest mountain in these parts. Those folks who've explored it from the inside say that there is music in its caves and laughter in its falls. <laughs> now who's telling stories here? Attention, deck watch. Stand by for river traffic. Over there to port is a canoe landing where local guides meet traders and explorers to lead them into the wilderness. You know, with all the traffic plying the river nowadays, it's a wonder there's any wilderness left. We just passed Fort Wilderness, the last outpost of civilization on the river. Mark three, mark three, quarter less three, half twain, half mark twain, quarter less, red flag, red flag and touching. If you're new to the river, you're probably wondering about those calls. Now that's the leadsman calling out the depth markings to keep us from running aground. Mark Twain! You know, back when I was a riverboat pilot, on many a night a storm and fog, we'd be straining our ears to hear that call. That's the welcomest sound of all to a riverman. Those two sweet words... 
Mark Twain. Safe water. Attention, Captain. Settler's cabin afire off starboard bow. Yeah, I see it. Poor souls. I'm afraid we're too late to help. Captain, uh, pardon my opinion, but uh, it looks as if that fire was caused by just plain carelessness. Those folks aren't only losing their own home, but the home of those eagles as well. <laughs> my sympathy goes to the eagles. Yeah, looks like the signs are clear. Man is in the forest. We're now entering Indian country. Up ahead is the local chief coming to welcome us. Indian village ahead, Captain. You know, their long, proud history is handed down verbally, just as that shaman is doing now. Well, judging by the flute he's holding, I, I'd wager he's telling the story of how the flute came to his people. That story probably goes back, uh, oh, for generations. Makes me want to learn the language just so I can listen in. Now look there to starboard. That beaver's about to add some cargo to our boat that weren't signed in proper. Yeah, to a beaver, though, it's just uh, busyness as usual. <laughs> you know, this whole island seems plumb full of adventure. Just the type of place where Tom Sawyer might have made mischief. Those tracks off the port side lead to Big Thunder Mountain, site of the biggest gold strike in these parts. But in spite of its riches, that mine's been riddled with trouble and strange happenings for as long as I can remember. I, for one, am not the least surprised. This area is the outskirts of a sacred Indian ground. Though I myself am not prone to superstition, some folks believe that restless spirits have taken over the mountain itself. It looks more like a family of restless marmots have taken over that wrecked train. Up ahead is the landing where our journey ends. Any parting words, Mr. Twain? Well, I'd like to leave the folks with just one thought for the day. Always do right. This will gratify some people and <laughs> astonish the rest. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Twain. And thank all of you for traveling with us aboard the Mark Twain Riverboat. We hope to see you again real soon. Engine room. Approach levy at one quarter steam. Man the bow line. All passengers, stand by to go ashore. Mm -hmm.